This is Jimmy Barry Mugby, hurler and footballer. And this is Jimmy Barry Mugby, shot and spare! It gives me great pleasure to put the car to the car captain, Ian Mugby. Hello, uh, this is Michal Martin, uh, Tawnishta, uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Minister for Defence, and I'm delighted to be recording my latest episode of my podcast today from Cork for the first time, and even more delighted to be joined by two sporting legends, Jules star Rena Buckley uh, and uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy. Rena won 11 All-Ireland Senior Ladies Gaelic Football Championships and seven All-Ireland Senior Camogie uh, Championships during her distinguished career with two Cork teams. And she's also an 11-time All-Star Award winner. Hello, Rena, and thank you for being my guest today. And beside you is another Cork sporting legend who Roy Keane calls his sporting hero. Also a dual star, Jimmy Barry Murphy, the only player in the history of the GA to win All-Irelands in hurling and football at minor, under 21 and senior level with his county and club All-Irelands in both codes with his club, St Finbars. He also enjoyed uh, a very high-profile managerial career with Cork hur- Hurling. Welcome, you both, uh, to this podcast. Uh, Rina, may I turn to you first and no pressure. What's the standout memory or, or season of, of, of your career? Oh, nice question, Michal. Thanks for having us, first <laughs> of all. We're delighted to be here. Uh, the standouts of my career... Um, like it's f- it's funny. I th- I think from a camogie perspective, um, actually my last year was probably the standout year, probably because it's freshest in my memory. Number one, and number two, I probably think I knew going into the season that it was going to be my last, and I I enjoyed every minute of it really. Um, it was a final. It was the twenty seventeen final. We beat Kilkenny in the end, and we won it by the skin of our teeth. Right. It was a real. St- like it was a, a really enjoyable match to be part of for me. Like like I'm an, I, I'm I'm a very different player to what Jimmy Barry Murphy was in terms of I, I think I'm an out and out defender. I think that's my mentality. <laughs> I I love the like it was a close game. The number of frees was through the roof. I think <laughs> that's um, right, yeah, and like yeah, it was yeah. just really tight. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the build up to the game. I enjoyed it after. Kind of knowing in the back of my head I probably wouldn't be back. And uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that. That's a very joyful way to, to, to end um, a, a career. Jimmy, what, what would yours? Or? Yeah, um, something similar. There are two in particular that stand out. It was three, I suppose, if I can have the limelight on three yeah. occasions. <laughs> I, uh, my first All-Ireland in 1973, I was 19. I had played minor the previous year, won the All-Ireland with Cork. And then I was picked on the senior football team. And uh, Cork hadn't won it from 1945 to 73. Right. But obviously in the time, uh, the, the age gap didn't mean much to me at, at, at 19. I wasn't worried about that. Whereas I'm sure the likes of Billy Morgan, Frank Cogan, Ray Cummins, all these, as they were much more concerned, they'd have been more aware of it. At 19, you don't care. You think you'll be in Crow Park every year anyway. <laughs> when you're, if you're cocky enough like I was at the time. <laughs> and that we won, we managed to win the All-Ireland. It was an incredible occasion in Cork at the time. Uh, he got a couple of goals in the final, of course, which is always makes it more special. And uh, that was one fantastic memory for me. I, I, it, to this mm, day, it has yeah. been, it's a very unique team for me. And the lads are great friends and we're all. So then the other one, I would say, my, like Rena finishing up, just during the year 1986, I felt that it was coming to the end of my career. Small bit of pace going, I felt. And uh, we were playing Galway in the final. And I remember I was in the hotel with Johnny Crowley in the morning of the match. And I said, Johnny, please God, we get out of this one. I'm gone. He said, you're joking. He said, I'm dead serious. So this is it. He said, we have to win today. He was a great friend of mine, and like yourself, Johnny Clifford, me all yes. great, great yep. man, you Absolutely. know very well in the He was a great friend of mine as well on and off the field. We became great friends over the years. He was our coach, and it was great to do it with him. And Tom Cashman, his captain, a great friend of mine. So that was very, very special. And the last one I must remember always, very special for me, was 1999, yep. manager of Cork, with a very young team. And uh, that's an occasion I'll never forget what the lads did for me that day. It was uh, unforgettable, really. That was, it was a very special occasion because we had been out the limelight for a while. And that a few tough years, yeah, uh, and yeah. I mean, a few tough years before, right? A tough, few tough years as manager, but you live and learn. And uh, we got over the line. I remember recently we had Brian Cody uh, talking to us uh, in terms of yeah. parliament. We had Pep, Pep talking to someone like that. that. He, he instanced the '99 game. Yeah. Uh, and he said um, his attitude was, I, I think they were they were they were kind of taken that year. I think no one really like there was a young Cork team you had. You put yeah. them together. Yeah, I went to every game, um, and, and you slipped them at the end if you like what the Cork team did. And it, but what was interesting is how he built and he looked. He felt they were 
he had particular weaknesses that day that he worked on subsequently and, you, yeah. and we all know what happened I remember actually passing in Holy Cross one day we were going and you were there with your family yeah. at the Abbey I think he stopped for a sandwich we were waving we at you we oh yes <laughs> right. if you remember it or not we remember I do we we all sandwiches at the Abbey yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> but could I say I, and, and just finally the 73 is always iconic and because I was 13 you were 19 <laughs> I broke my hand and I couldn't go to the game and oh. the, the father took my twin brother right yeah. but I all as I remember is Mihala Harris commentary oh, yeah. uh, in the second half I can take the word Jimmy Barry Murphy what's he going to do <laughs> it's a goal and <laughs> O'Hare does it much better he and does. so on like that and yeah. in Crease 3 I just attended Brother Cullum I, you might Sorry, remember Brother yeah. Cullum yeah. he spent a month talking about the game or in advance of it right. put history to one side and w I think Crease 3 had close to 7 or 8 past pupils there were huge influence and Nemo Rangers were as well obviously uh, at the time yeah because yeah, Nemo won the county and they took that's right Billy was captain Billy then. was captain Denny McDonald was chairman and they had a huge role the, at the time yeah so and Rina, can I c yeah. come back to you in terms of, of, of your sporting career? And both of you are like, incredible records as dual players. And, and I know people will say in the modern game, it's, it, it's impossible and so on. Do you think, particularly for underage players, that, that, that if, if managers maybe and coaches changed their, their attitudes maybe and less sort of uh, focused on their own setups, that perhaps certainly younger players could enjoy the dual uh, participation a bit more? Yeah, um, it could be a topical subject, particularly for the f in females for the adult female intercounty player, um, and like there's no doubt about it, being a dual player is getting harder and harder. But like I suppose when you're looking at, you know, hobbies, sports, sports a hobby, um, and that used to be something that used to get to me actually when I was doing interviews when I was playing intercounty sport, they'd be saying, well, "What do you do in your spare time?" <laughs> 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 Gee, this is oh, my spare time. Like, spare time. This yeah. is my yeah. hobby. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> work as well and things like that but like particularly like sport is a hobby G is a hobby um and i think it is fundamental that a manager particularly if you're not at a, at, at, at the top level if you're not at a, an elite level that you're managing the person you know you're yes. not too worried about yourself and your ego you're managing the person and what's best for the person um so often what's best for a person and an underage person is that you know, you're allowing them to, to develop at a couple of different sports that, you know, sport isn't overtaking their whole lives as well. At the same time, you know, they're still able to develop, you know, in school, they're still yes. able to develop socially in their relationships and things like that. And they're developing healthily in terms of sport as well. And like as a manager, your role is there to, to facilitate the person developing. And if you can do that as best as you can, like I, I think there is a place that, that people can play a couple of sports obviously then when it comes to you know the, the higher level. level and the elite level it changes a bit yeah. there is a change then For like you course. have to you have to specialize then at that point yeah. but to the point that you're still leading a healthy life and there's healthy balance um but sometimes i i see in in my own club and across clubs like I'll be saying, your man there thinks he's Alex Ferguson, like, you know, <laughs> and he's managing the under 11, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like, exactly the point I make. It is. You know, yeah. so, uh, like, it's just fine, like, the, the manager has to find that balance as well, like, you know, yeah. wi when becomes the point that, you know, the specialisation becomes important for the person, and, and when is it important that actually you allow the player to develop and pick up skills and learnings from other sports and, you know, yes. managing that, because there's definitely a benefit to to playing a couple of different sports at an underage level that will will make you a better player I think at a, at a senior level and just transitioning that is probably like it's not easy but I, I think it probably it's could be done a little point, bit better actually I put it to you Jimmy I mean in America uh, at the American college level it's not unusual for, for, for players to be doing either baseball or American um, football or indeed basketball, basketball well, yeah. uh, so dual, dual, dual playing in two codes is not unusual at the college level certainly um, would you have thoughts and perspectives on, on, on reading this? Says and also the point about that you learn an awful lot more if you do a lot of different things. Absolutely. I couldn't have answered the question any better than Rena gave it there. And I'm not just saying that. I thought it was a fantastic mm -hmm. answer. At the lower level, at, at the younger age levels, you've got to let young people develop all their different skills. And we're not all going to be elite players. And I know I go to lots of functions over many years and I ask to say a few words. I always try to emphasise to spread your skills it's not all about hurling football soccer there are loads of other sports that people might excel in obviously we were lucky enough to be yeah. reach a certain level in our own sports and we got to the elite level as we call it but young people must be encouraged more and more to develop their skills 
to in, in the proper environment the arenas are there if the people in charge of the underage teams can just let their their egos yeah. now we all have egos and we all want to win let's be honest uh, but you've got to recognize that these people are at a very developmental stage and you can harm a lot of their progress by the overemphasis on and the, and the obsession with winning so we need to put our egos aside and see that you're developing people in, y- in a younger people in a way to go on and be better um, teenagers first of all and then go on to the adult level and then they can sort out their own careers as Irina said at the elite level it, o- it obviously changes then you've got to make more choices in relation but at an underage level uh, whether they play football soccer rugby athletics gymnastics all these things I think they're fantastic developments you make great friends and it's not all about winning and I'm at an age now where I can really say that yeah. I'm involved in my own club in minor level yeah. and we want to develop the players and at the end of the day I'm not overly pushed whether we win the county championship or not it's every club's obsession as we know yeah. you know from your own club Nemo yeah. Rangers we're all the same but you've got to get mature let your egos be put aside a bit and see the overall development of the young person or boy or girl is key to the whole development process I think I think that's a very important what, what, what you're basically both saying is that there's a huge obligation on clubs managers and coaches to really focus on the development of the child and the young person as opposed to winning a particular competition at under 12 or under 14 or whatever that's essentially what you're saying here isn't it and just to say again yeah. I'll leave it at this I don't want to be hogging it um, it's vital then that the mentors and the managers give all the kids a game there's nothing worse than if you see the under 12 or 14 team playing and kids left on the sideline not getting a game It's you've got to involve them all and you've got to yeah. see the big picture because there's nothing worse than seeing kids going home and the parents ringing up after say look he's very disappointed didn't get a game he probably won't go next Saturday you know, you've got you, it yeah. happens. No, I tell you, I'm, it's fine because I remember we've all been there. Being a parent, like me too. <laughs> and they all they were getting hammered every week, like yeah, because uh, six or fel- seven fellows would come on towards the end of the game, and the game would go again, like you know? yeah, and yeah, <laughs> but, this but, is it. And, but and I think it's a great thing to do. To, every player has to get it, and and also Absolutely. players mature at different levels. I mean, you know, yeah, we're not all great at fourteen, but you could be better at eighteen. You know, no, so you've got to keep people. That's and, a very and important involved. point. Yeah, do you think there's a, an over intensity in the game? Uh, are in sport today to perform at all levels we're, we're talking about underage uh, the, you, everybody wants to, you, you know in terms of the enjoyment you mentioned earlier it's a hobby it's there to enjoy Irina I, is there an intensity that's kind of taking the enjoyment a bit out of it um, yeah there's I suppose look there's a, 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 a debate about that particularly at you know senior club and senior intercounty and people would kind of often say like Cheek or senior club now is a bit like what senior and county was like yeah. 15 years ago and is that the level we want to play at but uh, I'm looking through kind of a GA lens really because that's that's what I know best and I I think the high levels are quite serious Um, you know there is a high level of commitment required mm. you know there is you, you know you do have to make sa- or well you have to make choices you know that align to the, the team you're playing with but to be fair to to Gaelic games, what what is happening is that the the the, the grades at the lower levels are becoming better in that there's more availability of teams to play with, um, okay. and the competition structures are being run a bit better. I think at 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 different levels. So I think as the sport is evolving, I think people are able to find the level they want to play with and probably uh, again i'm just looking at true jaylins here we we probably need to develop more in (coughs) that area in terms of like the the less competitive uh, competitions there's still going to be competitions like but i suppose like uh, i'm looking from i suppose my exposure is to women's sport more than men's and you know you have gaelic for mothers and others which has taken off ferociously and that gives people a huge opportunity in terms of like football but (laughs) <laughs> like football's only a side show, really. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like it's the social connection. Let's get a football for mothers. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's mothers and moves. others. <laughs> That's the moves. So I met them in Crow Park there about two years ago. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a cousin of mine, known as Cork, <laughs> and they seem to be having a great crack. Oh, yeah. unbelievable! Yeah, and there's um, uh, come on and chat. There is a is a, a thing that Camogie are doing. So come on and chat. So again, it's so it's Camogie okay. at a social level. So like as much initiatives like that that can be brought in as possible and I think then you give everyone an option of what standard they want to play at and then it's up to the individual 
to yeah, choose. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if you yeah. want to play at the high level, you can go. For and it. if you're drawn <laughs> yeah. to that, Good yeah, point. go for it. Yeah. Whereas if you want to be there on a Saturday, but not on a Sunday, it is there for you, is it? Yeah. <laughs> What's your sense of that, Jimmy? What's your it's a great point, I think. Um, yeah. Obviously, if if you get onto even my own scene, the car curling and football scene, yeah, or soccer and brain fit underage soccer, all that. When you get to certain stages, Venus, really, there, then it's a, it's a matter of whether you can you have the dedication or the application as well to go with make it to the highest level. And you know everybody everybody doesn't want to devote their whole lives to that. A lot of us devoted a huge yeah. part for yeah. lives to doing yeah. that. Yeah. That's our choice. And again, it's not compulsory. And uh, but you make certain sacrifices in life. And y you know, <coughs> I think it's a great idea, as Rena said there. To g it's there for you if you want it. And if not, there's another level as well you can play at. You've seen it all over the years in junior soccer and Cork and yes. football yeah. and hurling. There's a certain level. Loves guys love winning the junior B county. No, and it's fantastic. Yeah. I see my own club do it. They come in. It's as if they won ten All Irelands. It's one of my own. He came to family. To win a junior B. <laughs> okay. No, but lads come in and it's, it's their junior B county is the same as my All Ireland. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. You have to yeah. respect that. And all the memories are there as well. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. exactly. And, and you know. So on like that, yeah. that has yeah. to be respected as well. But yeah. I think, there, as Arena said, there it's a there's a very singular um, s application to playing at the highest level. Yeah, and it's yeah. increased in hurling and football and camogie over and gay ladies football over the last couple of years. It's, it's yeah. that's the way life has developed. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, so that's and that's you mentioned your son Brian. I mean, he's in Manchester now. Manchester he? City. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he must have great insights into that level of modern coaching techniques. The yeah. kind of standards well, that were acquired today, like well, yeah. you met him in Manchester. I met him a couple yeah, recently, yeah. Yeah, with Dennis Irwin, yeah, and they were yeah. he's worked with Man, Man City Academy, he's head of the Man City Manchester yeah. City Academy, working under Pep Guardiola, and a big Spanish influence there. And he's finding that an extraordinary learning curve, really, Corby, for yeah, him. He's yeah. done all his, he's got his coaching badges, yeah, so yeah. that's a step in his career of coaching. He's, he's loving it, it's hugely demanding, but um, a whole different culture, obviously, that he's uh, been, yeah, which is to. fascinating, I think. It's yeah, fascinating, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and I don't go into too much detail on because you can't, you take hours yeah. to go into it from him. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> I thought you might be confidential no, in the agreement, he or whatever. He wouldn't bother <laughs> with me going into that detail, so I don't, I don't bore him, look, asking him too many questions, but I know it's a fascinating yeah. learning curve for him. And it's interesting, he's a very fine soccer player as well and you played with Cork Celtic um, <laughs> at, at, well, at one stage yeah. and it was going to be, like it's a kind of, a, I, I, look, I, I know uh, we're from Cork and all of that <laughs> but when I was growing up, I, I was always struck by the, the degree to which Cork sports people swap codes, if you like, played soccer, played um, rugby, you've been O'Connor recently, I think, yeah. in bars and so on like that. And uh, there's a great friend of mine who you would have met in Mox many years, and you're going to call him out, no, Frankie McCarthy. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I hope you're keeping well, Frank. But um, <laughs> I mean, he would mesmerize me with sort of histories of individuals and personalities who would have played with Cork Kibbs or Celtic or the bars. And, yeah. and, and there's an intimacy to the sporting community um, that I think is fa kind of almost unique here in, in, in the city in terms of that interchange. And in the early years with, ban with the ban and so on, like that was more difficult. Um, but I, I think it kind of has enriched Cork um, in terms of, of, of that dimension. Uh, if, if you'd comment on that, Jimmy, from your own experience. Or well, I, I suppose I, I, want to, I could be accused of I'm very, very parochial. I love all Cork sports people. And I, I take great pride in them all. Like when they're featuring um, both that team level, like the ladies footballer or Camogie, I'd be as interested as if it was the senior hurlers and footballers. It's the same to me. And like when our players go abroad, yeah. Like Roy Keane, Dennis Irwin, who was a club man of our own in Central right, yeah, as you know. Right, yeah. And uh, you know, you would drive from Mayfield, then we played underage Mayfield, but went to Rock Mountain, and then you had Sanyo Sullivan, who was an incredible, incredible athlete, athlete and, yeah. and a magnificent ambassador for us. Uh, all the all the other runners, just off Marcus, hand, Marcus, so, so, and all these. Um, oh, they're 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 fantastic Rowe. athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm very pro And then when we're in trouble, now, we're listening. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That always is trouble. But when you go move for, forward and you see Ron Nogara going on to yeah. coach in France and the level he has achieved, I take great pride in that. As and, well and, and he's and he's fantastic French. He's, yeah. he's fantastic. <laughs> 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 like, well, I can't do the accent. It's iconic. No. <laughs> I can't do that. But, but I, you know, it's just the pride I take in Cork people in all sports. I just I, I'm very pro I'm not, I'm not yeah, afraid to admit it. That's yeah. the way I am, you know. But it's that <laughs> kind of multi-sportal thing. I, I'm interested in yeah. that. I think it's good. And uh, Rena, can I, can I, who was your hero uh, growing up in sport? Um, was yeah. it men, women, both? B both, really. Um, so I, I used to do an awful lot of athletics as a child. Um, so definitely my first sporting hero would have been Sonia O'Sullivan, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and the fact she was from Cork as well. And, like th that's, and it's a huge thing for young people you know, to be able to relate to a role model. And she was someone, like, she was from Cork. She was a top international athlete. And, like, I was there every step of the way. I, I thought I was going to be, you know, like... <laughs> Crossing you know, that line. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. In like some stadium around the world. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, she, like, and, and that that was brilliant for me, like reflecting back. No, that was brilliant for me as a young person. Um, I would have been, I was, I'd say, I think I was in sixth class when Cork won the All-Ireland in 99 in hurling. So obviously sixth. that team, I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're really aging yeah. yourself. <laughs> I mean, I um, but prior to that, like, so, uh, like, it would have been Teddy McCarthy before that. Yeah. And then there was probably a bit of a lull. And then, yeah. like, it was all the 99 team, like, so, like Corcoran was the men, like, you know. Right. Brian, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, like. You scored kneeling down. Was that that year? Was was no, that was <laughs> later on. <laughs> <I think, laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was centre back that time. That's he right. wasn't doing a whole lot of scoring. He was centre back, yeah. And yeah. then I was lucky as well. Like, uh, so I'm from Inascara. So Irene O'Keefe was on the Cork Camogie team. So my mother taught her in school. She went to St. Ells. Oh, um, yeah. So I had a little in there, and she introduced me to, you know, brilliant players on that team. Like, there was, you know, the likes of Fiona Driscoll, Megs, Finn, Nitna, Duggan. They were, like, brilliant players. So. I, I, I got a list of autographs from them, like, and, yeah. you know, on the bus to the All Ireland finals, they were huge role models for me. And then I played football with Dunamore, and you had the likes of Nora Keller and Juliet Murphy, again, Cork players from my club. Like, it was brilliant. Yeah. I was surrounded. Like, I didn't have so to look far at all. Like, yeah. It's kind of important, yeah. though, that you, you have people you reach towards their level. because you, And you know them, you know where they yeah. live, like, and some of them, like, and you know You must now be are. conscious of the fact that, in, in many ways, your generation of Gaelic footballers are iconic. And that there's a whole generation of young children growing up really inspired um, with their heroes, which was your teammates. And you've mentioned some of them. But if you think about it, <laughs> I mean, you were 10 years on the go, like, because uh, I went there almost all of the other finals in different capacities. But I do, that's an important point in the role model. We now have it with soccer in, in terms of the Irish women's team and so on, doing so well, uh, qualifying for a World Cup. It really does signal, a, compared to your childhood growing up, almost transformative change in terms of uh, far more uh, heroes in women's sport now in different codes than there perhaps would have been uh, when you were growing up. Is Definitely. that fair? Yeah, well, mm. I don't know, like there's been huge strides made in that in terms of that and I'd nearly argue the point there was a, a time when the when the Cork footballers, the, the our team, like the, the ladies footballers, yeah. when we were in full flow, like I'd say we were getting more television appearances than the Cork men, you know, so I'd say we were, were nearly more identifiable, <laughs> actually, and yeah. it was a so. really yeah. unusual <laughs> scenario where the Cork women yeah. were nearly more recognisable than, than the Cork men, you know, like, it, it, it doesn't happen, you know, every well, day, every day of the week, you know, yeah. so. It was a phenomenal team, like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 incredible yeah. work there, but, exactly. uh, but it's incredible, it is, yeah. yeah, but, but like, it, 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 I think it probably will leave a huge um, impact on on the next generation of females in Cork that That's what I feel, yeah. Definitely like that that they have it like it's 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 seen as such a positive thing to play uh, with the Cork ladies football team and that you've a uh, like a generation of young females in Cork that want to play um want to play football and want to hopefully play at, at a high level if, if that's what they want to do, you know, and that it's normal and it's celebrated and it's good. Um And so also I, I think the the the, the, the women's soccer team, you know, you Denise O'Sullivan, you Megan Connolly, um, and Saoirse Noonan and others, um, that in terms of, you know, in PE classes and in terms of sport generally, there was a quicker fall off of women from sport prior to this kind of emergence. And I think their success, I think, will enable us maybe to keep more women in sport longer. Um, and Jimmy, just um, because we were talking about this prior to coming on and you had some thoughts maybe on how we pull all of this together into the future, men, women, particularly in, in, in the Gaelic codes. I don't want to get you into any controversial <laughs> set, setups there now. <laughs> I know, don't worry. I, yeah. I, I've, I've been reading, I've been following yeah. the ladies' football and, and Camogie yeah. team, obviously, and in particular this year's Camogie win was huge <coughs> for Cork, and that team have gained great popularity, yes. and rightly so. They were a brilliant team, and led by a fantastic captain of St. Irene, early Amy O'Connor, class corner forward, brilliant. and led us brilliantly in her performance in the other final. I said, uh, Irene, I played in finals, I'd love to have got a couple of the scores she got. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few forgetful <laughs> Cases, but that's one Amy will never forget anyway. And uh, but to bring it all together, there have been major problems in the last couple of years from clashes the of fixtures. ladies football and camogie. And I think in certain cases, and Rena alluded to this earlier, this is a classic case now where certain egos must be put aside and give the girls every chance to play both games because I think with a little goodwill it can be done and I think it's been worked on and you're aware of some yes. certain things that are going on in the background to try and bring it all together that can't go on that the girls are being forced to play a match on a Saturday and a monster final on a Sunday or vice versa in either code and a small bit of goodwill here on both sides 
can surely bring that together. And I think you you go to more matches than me now in early uh, yeah, yeah, playing yeah. Dublin and Cork when you're there, and you can see the way the split season in hurling and football. I, I think it's been a great success for clubs. No, there are different tweaks it, you can put to it, but I think it's good. Yeah, very. Yeah, it's interesting. Like we uh, a lot of support of people are saying to me it w- it'll never work. Back to Rena's earlier point about and yours about the development of the player. It's working for the player, absolutely like in terms the of and the clubs. And I think in fairness, uh, you know, the key is the club player who's not with Cork. Correct. He now knows his season is at a certain date, exactly. and it's key because they were being treated very badly. And you know, he was playing. Certainly, the club player was being treated as a second class citizen probably because yeah you'd start training one week and you wouldn't be pl- wouldn't playing again for three Cork months maybe yeah, three yeah. week break off again you know yeah, yeah so. exactly that wasn't done either yeah, and no, I, well think I, I think Mary McLeese is trying to put said that. together t- t- the two organisations uh, the three organisations <laughs> and I think there's there's a male perspective to this to let go as well in terms of the yeah. organisation of clubs and there is. Douglas now have the one club uh, rule or, or sort of ethos right. um, other clubs are trying to emulate that some are a bit slow and conservative uh, but what I notice in, in my own club is the burst of energy since the advent of of, 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 of women playing Gaelic games it's because fantastic, in yeah. terms of personnel I mean human capital to run that, the club it's a good point because I go to my own club there and we have a fabulous club set up now same yeah. as Nemo have and all the clubs around the county the facilities are better all the time but I do know one thing from talking to the Camogie people and I met some of them over the course of the last months the all Ireland final and that fundraising still for the Camogie team in particular and I'm sure football is the same. It's, it's not good in Cork because they have to do a lot of their own fundraising Heavy for lifting. training camps and things next year and you know that is something that is hard on the girls themselves I think isn't it they need to get more support even though yeah. the All-Ireland final that was fantastic but they've got to go and think about preparations for next year and they wouldn't have the, su- the basic support or financial or commercial backup back and, that uh, the, which, which footballers the, the footballers have, have yeah, and that's yeah, something yeah, really yeah. I'd love to see yeah. being more addressed in favour of the girls and, and football team yeah, that's a, that's a fair point, yeah. and and maybe on that point, like like I mean, if you were minister for sport in the morning, now, um, <laughs> what would you do? What would your t- sort of top priorities be? Um, it's a big question. <laughs> I was hoping you might ask Jimmy that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy led you into it there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he, did, he did. He did. Ah, like if I, I I suppose look my my passion would be kind of uh, my pa- obviously uh, specific sport aside, like. Um, you know, I I I came up to ranks obviously playing female yeah. Gaelic games. No, n- not every like in in some sports like you mentioned athletics and you know that like was always there swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Like there there isn't issues in terms of equality in 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 those type of sports. Um, but in some of the mainstream sports, Gaelic games, soccer, rugby, there are major issues in terms of equality. Um, and I suppose if I was minis- Minister for Sport in the morning, that's probably something I'd go after. Um, I know that in GA lately, they did bring out um, a 40% fee- uh, yep. represent, uh, gender representation rule, so it has to be 40% of one or the other. The Minister is sort of saying to the sporting bodies, you've got to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and I think it's attached to funding and things like that as yep. well. So that's a very positive step. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a lot of things like that that can be brought in to ensure that, you know like funding is a massive yeah. thing that that w- is lacking in 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 some of the female sports and the lack of equality um in terms of funding is is really probably holding female sport back in 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 a lot of regards in in sp- in particular sports so that's probably what I go after first um and then I suppose the second one would be like in you know sport is helpful sport is brilliant you know it, it's it's really beneficial for for everybody who's involved in it, um, and there's no doubt about it that it's if you're in a more affluent society or an affluent area, it's easier to get involved in sport and stay in sport. So it's probably the yes trying yeah. to get sport, I suppose, more established and in, in marginalised communities in or marginalized communities will feel disadvantaged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. without yeah. a doubt, yeah. Yeah, yeah Rena stole all my best lines. In <laughs> fairness, yeah. because yeah. no, I want to get to this point. You you also come from a boxing background, yeah. and it's a sport that I've always followed. Never took part in it, but I know that in less affluent areas, as Rena said, there it's much more difficult. And if I was minister for sport in the morning, I would pump huge sums as where 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 it's being used properly, obviously, into less well off areas. I think I think boxing clubs in inner city areas Correct, yeah. are a huge factor in this, and we've got to get children boys and girls sorry out of the cycle of dropping out of sport and i think these clubs in inner city areas in particular do massive work and it takes a lot of the we, we've got to get out of the cycle of kids dropping off getting into antisocial activities 
alcohol, drug abuse. It's a huge part of our society nowadays. And I know great strides have been made by the lottery funding and all that. And obviously, you can't set up a boxing club or a hurling soccer club in the morning and pour thousands into them unless it's properly structured. So I think all the support should be put there. But as Rena said there, it's very important, particularly in less affluent areas where the families mightn't have the support structure to keep them at sport. We've got to get that done because we have major problems in social activities in in young teenage mm. adolescents you know more about it than I do no, I and what you're I mean, facing in relation to yeah. social activities are vital for or in, in our inner city areas and even in country areas where it's harder to get to these activities we've got to put the support structure and I always go back to boxing they've always done us proud in the Olympics they're oh, fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. great clubs in tougher areas let's be honest about it and I would give them far more greater support maybe than what they get I think what's key there and it's an issue in area I am interested because my, my late father was a boxer um, I think they need stronger administrative capacity backup. Sometimes, okay. uh, I think Rena made, yeah. made a good point about in certain areas, there's no problem filling in the lottery application, getting all the quantity surveyors. Sorry, in. that was my point, Tish. I was yeah, going to say uh, that you've got uh, to have the, like, you can't pour hundreds of thousands into a place so yeah. that's not properly run. Uh, but the, many of the clubs are well run from a boxing perspective. Yes, but the administrative. But they may not have the, the way disciplinary sort of inputs. Yeah. Because you, you can set up a boxing club relatively. You get the ring, you get the, the, yeah. the bags, <laughs> yeah. you can start it up. Now, yeah. we have some established ones at the Glen. And I know that. Some great clubs out the county. But I've said this to successive sports minister and Thomas Byrne is on this now. It's not just enough to say, please apply for the grant, is what I'm saying, really. We've got to help them point. get the grant. Exactly. Um, in, in, in applying for the grant. And in, and in so the on. areas where it's tougher for young yes. kids to keep up, yeah. we must get good people involved in those clubs to make sure that yeah. it's, it's, it's long term. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the volunteer aspect is crucial as well, isn't it? That you're supporting people to volunteer as well. Yes. Not just the adolescents, because it's twofold. One, yeah. you're like. Um, like it's it's beneficial for the volunteer and two then it's going to be your role modeling for the young person to stay involved absolutely and you you know you're steering them on a, a good path in life and it's an inc- like your your f- specialty is is well-being like boxing really demands um, incredible lifestyle uh, and fitness so it's actually a very good sport for young people yeah. uh, to get into because it's about discipline um, and so on like that and, and fitness and, and, and I suppose and we don't always appreciate as Irina said there the voluntary work being done at these because it's easy for me to go along and be asked to coach <laughs> Cork Miners or Cork Seniors it's a high profile job and we all love doing it but to go down to under 12 or 13 14 yeah. soccer athletics box that's hard work I think but it yeah. takes great people to do it and the, I'm always in awe of these people who do that and they're not the big names that we're supposed to be out in the in the in the media, but these people are doing all the work to deliver those people up to the up the pipeline, level. up to the elite mm-hmm. level. Yeah, if yeah, that makes the, sense. Those are the stars. Yeah, and, and on the well-being question, that is your. I'm correct in saying that's an area you're particularly interested in. Correct. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I suppose it speaks to sometimes historically sport was sort of seen as we we we'll allocate so, so much funding over there, but when you when you relate it back to the well-being of society, it actually is something we should have a centre stage in terms of funding allocations and prioritisation because it actually is very important to, to, to the individual well-being. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I mean, <coughs> I mean, sport is, is very beneficial to, to the person and, like, it's it's beneficial to, to your health, obviously, like, you know, like yeah. your, your physical health. But there's also a huge benefit to being involved in, in your community, you know, to have those relationships. Um, it gives you a purpose, gives you a meaning and... That's that's very very important in terms of, um, like your overall well being, um, and and that that sense of community. Like uh, I was I was chatting earlier to, to Siobhan and I was saying like loneliness kills. Like you know it's not yeah, just yeah, yeah, diabetes yeah, does, and yeah, yeah. strokes. You know loneliness kills as well. So, like having that community structure in place that, you know ordinary people can be part of, um, like that's really important for our society and like sport is fundamentally good um so like if if you can have a a person involved in sport it'll definitely lead to us having a better society so the more people you can have involved in sport will lead to i think a better culture and a better society and like the more people you can have from different backgrounds and so on like involved in sport i just think it's only positive for for us as a as a soci- society and also for the individuals and not just the the sporting participant but all the volunteers involved in the club and involved in the community it's it, you know it's it's a it's a key pa- it's part of our, our our society and our way of life and i think if that can be promoted i think it's only good for everybody
So in other words, sport is essentially about socialization and, uh, and participation in society more generally. I think so, yeah, and that's that's sport Both at a broad level, which is, which is like the <coughs> best part of sport. Really, the elite is obviously yeah. fantastic, <laughs> but like I mean, when we strip all that away, I mean, anyone who does even reach elite, you can only Johnny Sexton aside, right? You, you can only <laughs> you can only reach it for a certain amount of time, and then you're you're back into you know your your back normal. Junior B, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but, but you, all of you have mentioned. Um, all of you have mentioned the coaches, the um, volunteers, which I empathize. In fact, um, when I came out of Leaving Cert, I was that volunteer for years, right? But and, and, and got great enjoyment out of it. But the person that I think is the, the greatest volunteer of all is the referee. Yeah. <laughs> and I worry about it um, in terms of the pressure on referees in the modern game uh, at all levels. It's just incredible. Parents are incredibly intense, intensive in their criticisms. And you often wonder, leaving a pitch, like, why would anybody want to be a referee? I know. It, yeah, like, and the a, GA is particularly... It's, it's a very good point, and I must say, guilty like, of it on a few occasions myself. <coughs> I'm not totally innocent in this. We've all showed at referees, and I'd be often embarrassed after I did it, and I've learned over the years, I think, that you've got to really learn to re respect. I think that's one thing that rugby generally do yes. have perfected over the years. They have. There se would you agree? There seems to be way more respect for the referee. And I think it gets back to one factor. Too many people on the sideline. I mean, I'm not a parky ring watching a match. Bars and Neem or Glenn and the Bars. Like, there could be mayhem there. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it is. It's something that the rugby people don't have. You're at a GM Agreed. match and you go and then watch the rugby on television. And yeah. The, there's <laughs> polite chats happening between the referee and the captain. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and of course, the knowledge. Me, sir. Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the and the knowledge that the referee, the, the rugby referee has <laughs> of a very sort of um, detailed, uh, stuff, detailed yeah. rule yeah. book, yeah. like, you know, it's incredible. And uh, and we've some very good referees we today. Have to, we have to gear towards that. Uh, and, a, and, and, and I say guilty as charged on occasions. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> and, and, and what it frustrates me, no, I think the rule's about saying, you know, if you complain or whatever, it's gone up 20 yards. And that's then, the then you're conceding a point. Exactly. Uh, uh, by messing and so on. Yeah. Like that, you know? yeah. Uh, and that might bring a bit of discipline into players. Because we still have a culture in the GA whereby uh, yeah. if you shout loud enough, he might change or she might change her mind. And they won't. Uh, and they might make the next decision. <laughs> yeah, you make the next one. That's <laughs> what the generally we hope yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you any thoughts on that, Rina? Oh, gee, Because <laughs> I know you were impeccable. <laughs> 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 definitely not. Definitely not. But, yeah, like, again, like, you, you'd have to uh, look at rugby and say, like, what are they doing? What Like, what can we bring in? And, like, from a GA perspective, I, w I wish there wasn't so many red cards overturned and, you know, disrespecting referees from that that regard, you know, that you uphold referees' decisions maybe a little more often than happens. And um, Yes, <laughs> except when they're blatantly wrong, Rena. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but should we, we've it, I mean, t Teddy McCarthy's biography, the, 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 that great yeah. story when he came back, I think it was the, when he's first started, I remember they drafted him in. Yeah. And there was a big schmazzle done in, in SARS and some of them right. ran onto the pitch, grabbed him, and I can't use expletive, run <laughs> like hell, t t t the game was abandoned so there could be no referees the or car going and no red yeah. card. <laughs> and Teddy himself didn't realise yeah, that what was, was going on. <laughs> that yeah. was going on. He had rumours that yeah. he could be drafted in. Oh, yeah. I think it, the tall man on the Galway half back line, I think, was the strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we had that culture. That was Johnny <laughs> for that, yeah. 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 And I remember referees giving club in the club match and the father would say to me that he's out now for cock like what a stupid, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah. A stupid decision by the referee I know like, yeah don't know what the decision the referee's <laughs> supposed to allow for him <laughs> like, whatever like yeah so that's true but, yeah. I but could I just say that, like that that's um, really appreciate your your thoughts and your perspective two great players uh, and what I want to say to, to you both um, and it's important uh, aspect characteristic I think in people humility and um, humble people uh, and that's I think when you're from this part of the world they don't let you get too big for your boots anyway <laughs> that's true um, but I think you've you've been fantastic uh, examples in terms of humility uh, in greatness and uh, just thank you for sharing your time with me and for, for, for everybody listening in you've entertained thousands over the years uh, and will do so for many years to come thank you very much indeed thank you very much thanks really